Welcome to Tiger King's YouTube channel. Recently, I have made short pipe nozzles to attach them on the tank head. Today, I will show you how to fit up and weld the slip on flange to the pipe. First, setback. We should understand the setback to fit up and weld the slip on flange. What is setback? It is the distance from the slip on flange face to the pipe face. Why do we need setback? Setback is required to weld flange inside. It is a filler weld. What is the proper setback? In general, the pipe thickness is the least setback. Adding a little bit gap between 332 and 18 to the pipe thickness is common. This is what I do. The pipe thickness is around quarter inch plus 1/8 extra gap. Then the setback is 3/8 inch. I want to give a clearance of 3/8 inch from the flange face to the pipe face. How can I give 3/8 inch setback? I have some nuts and each height is 3/8 inch. So I use them as a spacer. You can use blocks or pipe rings instead. Now you can give a tag. Second, how to check if the pipe is straight to the flange? You can use a level or a combination square. Locate the level on the flange and the pipe to see if they are leveled. I locate the level on the pipe top, but I don't recommend this. It may not be correct if the pipe cut is not straight. That's why I prefer to use a combination square. Locate the square on the back and look at the square blade and the edge of the pipe sidewall. If they are parallel, the pipe and the flange are straight. If they are not parallel, they are not straight. Here are some important points to keep in mind when dealing with flanges. The top of the flange is raised. This is called a raised face. So, if you look at the flange labeling, it says SORF. It stands for Slip on Flange Raised Face. When connecting the flanges, a gasket is inserted between them, and a small groove is machined to ensure good sealing. You have to be very careful not to damage or scratch this groove. It is very important, so you have to be very careful when working with flanges. Therefore, before working, clean the table thoroughly and make sure there are no small particles and never drag the flange on the table. Now it is ready to weld. The pipe is 6 inch schedule 40 stainless steel. You can use a rotator, a vise, a weld table, or a pipe stand etc. to weld this. I consider many ways and pick the most efficient method. I think using a rotator is the best for this job. The pipe is chalked into a weld rotator. I angled it up a little bit higher for a better weld position. I like a working cup so I don't need an arm rest. But if you prefer a free hand, use an arm rest. It helps a lot. Today, I would focus on welding procedures rather than welding itself. I have uploaded many flange weldings before. Please look at those episodes if you need to learn how to weld slip on flange or filler weld. The link is added to the description and at the end of this video. Key point one, weld inside first. Will you weld inside first or outside first? 
you have to weld the flange inside first, or the flange will be bent outward. Key point two, high amp, run fast, do multi passes. What is the proper welding current for this job? This is the most common question I get from other welders. My answer is, set the welding current as high as you can control comfortably. I can do this job at 80 amp, 140 amp, 180 amp. My boy, who is a hobby welder, can do this job at 80 amp, 100 amp, and 110 amp. He may be struggling from 120 amp. Then the best amp for him is between 100 and 110. On the other hand, the best amp would be around 160 amp for me. Same job, but different welding current depending on welder's experience and skill. Run as fast as possible. Do multi passes for schedule 45 or bigger rather than building lots of weld deposit at once. From my experience, this is the best way to do filler weld with TIG weld process. The first pass is done. This is how the first pass looks like. The weld current was 150 amp and I used 332 filler wire. A filler rod for the second pass depends on how much the first weld is built up. I think 332 is a little bit small for the second pass, so I picked 1.8 filler rod. The second pass is done and it comes out okay as you see. I want to add a couple of details you should know to do a nice slip-on flange weld. First, you should cover the pipe top edge line with your weld. If it goes over the edge, no worry, it is fine. Second, if you see the flange edge, it is chamfered. Try to finish your weld inside of this machined chamfer. If it goes over, it hurts the raised face. That's why I gave 1-8 extra gap for a setback. Inside the weld is done and we go for the outside. The rotator is not big enough to hold the flange. Don't worry, we can make a jig like one you see. If you have a better idea, please let us know. Like inside the weld, the same rule is applied for outside the weld. High amp, run fast, do multi passes. The first pass is done. I left a small hole to get the entrapped air out when I do the second pass. You may experience a small explosion if you don't have this breathing hole. The second pass is done. I think it is big enough to satisfy the required weld size, so I will stop here. When some others want me to evaluate his flange weld, I always check the inside pipe. For Schedule 40 stainless pipe, no color change is the best. Light brown is okay. If it is black, you give too much heat and your weld skill is not good enough. But no worry, if you keep doing it, your skill will improve soon. If you want to see more detail about how to weld slip on flange, please look at the link at the end of the video and description. I will try to share my real welding experience. I'd like to show you how I work. I'd like to share experiences and skills with people. If you like, please subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.